Pacific Island countries show unity as Washington and Beijing compete for influence in their strategically important region. Welcome to VOA Asia Weekly, I'm Chris Cascao in Washington. That story is coming up but first making headlines. U.S. FBI Director Christopher Wray said Tuesday the agency has assessed that a leak from a laboratory in Wuhan, China likely caused the COVID-19 pandemic. China denounced Ray's comments Wednesday and called them the politicization of origin tracing. A new U.S. Congressional Select Committee on Competition with China held its first hearing Tuesday evening and focused on human rights. The committee is bipartisan, but some Democratic lawmakers have voiced concerns that it could further fuel anti-Asian sentiment in the United States. Beijing reported Wednesday that its key measure of manufacturing activity showed production expanded at the fastest pace in more than a decade in February, surpassing expectations after the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions late last year that had made 2022 one of the Chinese economy's worst years in nearly half a century. Thousands of workers in Sri Lanka held a one-day strike Wednesday to protest massive increases in taxes and electricity rates. Reports say the government increased taxes by as much as 36% and raised the electricity rates by more than 60% to put its finances in order and qualify for an IMF bailout. Vietnam's Communist Party nominated Vo Van Thuong as the country's new president and he was sworn in Thursday. His predecessor was forced to resign in January as part of a sweeping anti-corruption campaign. The Pacific Islands Forum has welcomed back Kiribati after the island nation withdrew more than six months ago from the key regional group under pressure from Beijing. As VOA's Jessica Stone reports, the Pacific Islands are again unified just as Washington moves forward with its own negotiations with the region. Hello from Washington. Well, negotiations are actively underway now between Washington and the leaders of three Pacific Island nations, Palau, the Federated States of Micronesia, and the Royal Marshall Islands. They are all trying to renew a compact of free association. The three island nations have all signed a framework for negotiations with Washington that will see the U.S. guaranteeing them millions of dollars in financial assistance in exchange for what's known as strategic denial. That is the ability for the U.S. to block other countries from getting military access to these islands. You may recall these Pacific islands played a strategic role in the Allied military victories over Japan during World War II. Once finalized, the compact will bring Palau, Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands closer to the U.S., as China is vying for closer ties in the region. On Tuesday, the top Asia official at the U.S. State Department told the House Foreign Affairs Committee that he's committed to completing the compact negotiations. You may have seen, Congressman, that we have concluded MOUs with all three of the freely associated states, and we look forward to working with Congress to conclude those deals. Washington is strengthening its ties with the region just as the island nation of Kiribati returns to the Pacific Islands Forum. An honor guard greeted Kiribati's president, Taneti Mamau, when he arrived in Fiji for a leader's retreat in late February. Kiribati decided to return to the Pacific Islands Forum earlier this year after Fiji's prime minister, the current chair of the bloc, formally apologized for not heeding Kiribati's concerns about the group's leadership. Mamau informed the forum last July that Kiribati would be leaving, dealing a blow to the region's strategy to remain united as both China and the United States compete for regional influence. In late February, Fiji's prime minister stressed that the Pacific Islands must remain united in the face of climate change and geopolitical pressures. Let us not forget that the regional architecture cannot survive without the relational structure of our Wu Valley, our family. These Pacific Island nations now face the exact same quandary as other nations throughout Asia. How to balance their relationship with both China and the United States. Jessica Stone, VOA News, Washington. Finally, NBA star James Harden surprised a student from China who suffered serious injuries in the Michigan State University shooting with a video call. 20-year-old John Howe was left paralyzed from the waist down in last month's shooting. He's a big fan of the Philadelphia 76ers player. Harden also sent some gifts to Howe in the hospital and donated to his fundraiser. Visit voanews.com for the most up-to-date stories. That's all the time we have here on VOA Asia Weekly. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Chris Cascajo. Please tune in again next week.